Chapter 791 Olivia thought Logan would bring Snowball back to her, but she waited until nightfall, and he didn't come. It was fine, she planned to hand Snowball over to Irene before she left, anyway. She was destined to live a life on the road. She couldn't keep Snowball around that much longer. Besides, Olivia felt like her misfortune would spread to the people around her. So, it was best if everyone stayed away. Jeff, Mona, and Snowball were all victims of her misfortune. She didn't want to see anyone else get hurt because of her. Logan was alone, and he was gentle toward cats. Leaving Snowball with him was also a good option. Tasha had some personal issues to tend to, so she went home early. Olivia was the only person left in the spacious yard. The solar-powered lights in the yard lit up automatically and shone on her face. The lights in the condominium weren't turned on. Olivia was sitting at the spot where the light and dark intersected. Her expression was cold. In the past, Snowball was very energetic. It would be running around the yard every day. Sometimes, it would also play with the cat teaser and make the bell on it ring constantly. At that moment, Olivia was alone. Even her shadow looked lonely as the lights stretched it out. A gust of chilly wind blew at her. She looked up and saw the lanterns hanging above her swaying in the wind. Olivia smiled self-deprecatingly. It was fine if she was alone. At least she wouldn't cause trouble for others, nor would she bring misfortune to others. She got up and went into her room. The darkness slowly swallowed her up entirely. That was the path she had chosen. She would never regret it. Olivia had started to do some simple exercises recently. Although she would feel unwell if she exercised too intensely, she sucked it up and went through with it. Seven days passed. Keith and Irene came to see her off at the docks. It was spring, and life was slowly returning to the world. Olivia liked this city a lot. Even the sea was like a gentle mother who embraced her children. Oliva wore a huge hat and a cloak that covered her from head to toe. Only her face was slightly visible. She was 5 feet 6 inches tall and weighed around 90 pounds. She was very slim. Irene wiped her tears as she was sad to see Olivia go, but she could understand how Olivia felt. She didn't want to cause them any trouble. If the Millers found out that they were helping Olivia fake her death, they would definitely punish both their families for it. Since they couldn't keep her around, the best decision was to support her show her some understanding, and let her live her best life. Olivia, safe travels. You have to contact us often. Okay. Olivia reached out and wiped Irene's tears away. Then, she said gently, live your life to the fullest with Keith. I'll never forget what the two of you have done for me. We just want you to be happy. You've lived such a hard life. It's okay. I'll be careful. Keith handed her a card. You can't use your own money now. Take this card. Olivia wanted to turn him down, but she didn't know what was waiting in the road ahead, so she accepted it. I'll pay you back someday. The best way to repay us is to stay alive. Keith patted her on the shoulder and said, I don't know when we'll meet each other again. You have to take care of yourself. I've prepared all the medication you need. Remember to take them. I've already talked to the captain and the sailors. They won't mistreat you but you'll be spending quite some time at sea, around two months. It's okay. I've been through worse. This is nothing. All right, time's almost up. I'll be boarding the ship now. Safe travels, Olivia. Farewell. Chapter 792 Irene rested her head on Keith's shoulder. Tears welled up in her eyes as she watched Olivia walk up the ship. For some reason, I just feel like crying. I feel like Olivia has suffered too much. She left as things were just starting to get better. And now she will be spending so much time at sea. What if, what if something happens to her at sea? Keith wrapped his arm around her shoulder and comforted her. Everything will be fine. Tobias has sailed for more than 20 years without any incident. Olivia might have suffered a lot, but her luck isn't that bad. I've worked as a doctor for so many years. Fortune had to have smiled on her for her to survive what she had gone through. She has already been through so much. Things will get better for her. Every dog has its day, after all. I hope so. I don't understand why she would go back to Aldenvine at the risk of being discovered. It's much safer here, far away from Ethan. Irene sighed. 
She must have something important that she needs to do. Something so important that she couldn't wait a few more months. Don't worry, I kept an ace up my sleeve. I arranged for someone to protect her. I wouldn't have let her go on the journey alone. That's reassuring. Let's head home. A sailor helped Olivia onto the boat. He was very polite to her, like she was an important guest. It was clear that Keith spent a pretty buck to sort things out for her. She was very grateful for his help. She planned to repay his kindness several times over in the future. After she got on the ship, the captain started to tell her about the ship's structure with a warm attitude. Miss, I've been briefed by Mr. Rogers. I'll make sure your trip is as comfortable as it can be. But since this is a cargo ship, it wouldn't be as fast as other transportation. We'll be at sea for quite some time. I hope you can bear with us. I understand. All right. My name is Tobias. Look for me if you need anything. I'll get someone to show you to your room. Thanks, Mr. Tobias. I appreciate it. No need to thank me. I'm just doing my job. Right this way. Olivia's room was on the fourth floor. She had a good view, and the room had been touched up beforehand. Even the sheets were new. There were even flowers. Miss Fordham, if you need anything, tell me now since the ship hasn't set sail yet. After we set sail, you'll have to wait until we reach the next stop. We won't stop midway. Everything looks fine. I don't have anything I need for now. All right then. We'll be setting sail. The ship started to move. Olivia stood on the deck and looked at Keith and Irene, who were on shore. Irene was waving at her. Olivia also waved back at her. They might never get to meet again after this. She really liked this city. It was safe, the weather was nice. Even the winters weren't as chilly. Spring arrived so quickly, and it brought life back into the world. Flowers blossomed and decorated the city with bright and beautiful colors. It was autumn in Aldenvine. The difference was night and day. Time passed really quickly. A few more months and a whole year would have passed. Olivia wondered if her acquaintances in Aldenvine were doing good. The winds at sea gradually grew stronger, so Olivia prepared to return to her room. She was met with a familiar face when she turned around. She looked at the smiling man in surprise. Why are you here? Logan smiled as he explained. Mr. Rogers gave me another job. To bring you back to Aldenvine safely. Olivia was pleasantly surprised by the reunion. But in a way, she kind of expected it. Chapter 793. Right after they met, Olivia asked, Is Snowball doing okay? It's doing fine. I've entrusted it to one of my friends. They'll take good care of it. Mr. Rogers didn't trust others to take care of you, so he sent me. I'll be in your care. Olivia turned around and walked into her room after she said that. Was she imagining things? She didn't feel a shred of joy after being reunited with Logan. In fact, she had a weird feeling, like this person wasn't supposed to show up here. But his appearance was completely justified. Olivia's intuition was telling her that she should stay away from him. It was never good to stay with someone you didn't know too well for too long. Subconsciously, she wanted to stay away from Logan. In the following days, she mostly kept to herself in her room. She didn't even go outside for meals. Logan would bring the meals to her, and she would thank him and close the door. They barely even talk every day. Logan's expression was unchanged. He didn't treat his job any less seriously because Olivia distanced herself. He would still bring her three meals on time every day. He would also bring her fresh tea and fruits every afternoon. Even the apples would be cut into slices for easier consumption. He was a burly man, but he was very considerate. Olivia poked around at the grapes Logan sent her, deep in thought. Back when they were living in the condominium, Tasha was the one who prepared her food. Olivia didn't like to trouble others, so she never told Tasha about her preferences. She would eat anything Tasha prepared whether it was food or fruits. Although Keith had taken care of her for a while, she never asked for anything in particular. So, he didn't know her preferences either. Since she got on the ship, the food and fruits sent to her were different daily. But all of them were her favorites. Even Tasha might make a couple of dishes that she didn't like. The past few days on the ship, she hadn't gotten any food that she didn't like. In terms of probability, 
That was not really possible. And only one person in the world knew her this well. After two hours, Logan came to collect her meal tray. He saw that the grapes were untouched. Miss Fordham, are the grapes too sour and not to your liking? I've tried them. They should be okay. Olivia was lazing on the bed. She propped her chin up with one hand and asked calmly, I've never told you I don't like sour things. Why do you know? Logan quickly replied, I thought women preferred sweet things. I figured it was the same for you, Miss Fordham. Do you like sour ones? I'll go find some sour fruits for you in the kitchen. I think there were some sour apricots. As he was turning around to leave, Olivia called out, No need. I just didn't have much of an appetite. I'll be fine after some rest. It will be dull at sea, and we'll be here for quite some time. Mr. Rogers specifically told me that you need to take your meals on time so you can absorb more nutrients and recover sooner. You don't have to be afraid of causing trouble for me. You can tell me anything you need. I'm paid to do your bidding. All right. I'll be taking a nap. Okay. I'll be outside the door. Call me if you need anything. Logan left and closed the door behind him. Olivia looked at the door, deep in thought. She was observing his expression when she asked her questions. His expression didn't change at all. If he were lying, he wouldn't be so calm. She rubbed her temples and wondered if she was just traumatized by Ethan. Maybe that was why she was so suspicious of others. Chapter 794 The food for dinner was on the sour side. Olivia didn't like that but took a few bites of everything. In the following days, there were more sour foods in the meals. She couldn't take it anymore. She called Logan over and said, There have been too many sour dishes recently. I'm a little tired of them. All right, Miss Fordham, what do you prefer? I'll note it down and tell the kitchen. Olivia observed his expressions carefully. But his mannerisms and movements didn't resemble Ethan at all. Even if Ethan were the only one who knew her so well, he wouldn't drop everything to stay by her side. Besides, he was a proud man. He wouldn't be so subservient. Olivia had observed Logan for a few days but found nothing suspicious. She started to relax and stopped distancing herself from Logan. The days out at sea were indeed dull. Even if the view was great, it got old after an extended period of time. Olivia was sitting on the deck. The sunset was most beautiful at this hour. The evening breeze was blowing gently. Olivia wasn't wearing a hat. She didn't care about her image at all. Even if some of the sailors' gazes fell on her bald head, she could face them calmly. Some hairs were starting to grow on her head, making it look like a kiwi fruit. Logan glanced at her head and asked with concern, Miss Fordham, the winds are getting a little chilly. Do you need a hat? I don't. This is fine. Olivia patted the seat next to her and said, Come talk with me. After observing Logan for a few days, her suspicions were cleared up. So, she was more open with him. The days on the ship were very dull. Her emotions had been bottled up, and she was starting to feel depressed. Logan was considerate. He started the conversation. Miss Fordham, do you know what our next stop is? Olivia gazed at the sea, and her mind was blank. I've never paid any attention to that. Falconer Straits. Olivia's expression changed. Even though she had never been here, she had read about the place in books and heard about it on social media platforms. It was one of the most notorious places in the world. It wasn't because of the view but because of its nickname, Devil's Chasm. This part of the ocean had been abandoned by all the countries from the last century. Since then, it had developed into a lawless place where criminals thrived. There were plenty of pirate groups in this area that scared people away. This route was a necessary passage between the north and south. A lot of merchant ships were plundered in the earlier years. Some horrifying and atrocious incidents also happened in the region. The military forces of the surrounding nations joined forces to eliminate the pirates. Most of them were killed, while others ran away. The route has been relatively peaceful in recent years, but the pirates weren't completely rooted out yet. Are there still pirates in the area? Olivia asked with a frightened expression. She just wanted to have a smooth trip without any complications. The surrounding nations banded up and took down the pirates five years ago. A lot of the pirates' main forces were obliterated. But these people are like roaches. 
They come back very quickly. Olivia felt a chill down her spine when she heard his serious voice. She bit her lip and asked, Are we in danger? Logan looked at her and said slowly, I won't let anything happen to you. You, why are you telling me all this? Olivia was puzzled. I just wanted you to have a clearer understanding of your current situation. Chapter 795 Logan said matter-of-factly, this is a breeding ground of crime. Criminals do whatever they want here. Even if they had become more restrained in recent years, there is no guarantee of safe passage. You need to prepare yourself for the worst. Olivia was puzzled. Since it might be dangerous, why didn't we take another route? There's a little bit of a gambler in everyone, especially businessmen. If we don't take this route, we would have to take the further way around. That would be an extra two weeks at sea. Besides, the other routes posed some dangers as well, like the risk of hitting reefs, not to mention the additional costs of a longer journey. Since there were fewer pirate sightings in recent years, everyone feels more at ease passing through this route. Logan's explanation was very detailed, but Olivia felt like there was more to it. Do you have a different opinion? I just feel like we have to prepare for the worst for anything especially when we're talking about notorious criminals. Logan turned and saw Olivia's grave expression. He softened his tone and said, Did I scare you? I'm sorry. I just wanted to fill you in on the situation. Olivia smiled. It's okay. We won't be so unlucky. If others didn't come across the pirates, surely we wouldn't either. Don't worry. We won't be so unlucky. This is the devil's chasm. Have you heard of the blissful isles? Olivia shook her head. I haven't. Tell me about it. Okay. The blissful isles are located. Before they realized it, the sun had already set. Olivia realized that Logan might not be the most knowledgeable person, but he must be one of the most insightful. From his description, Olivia felt like she was transported to these places. She didn't know that there were such dangerous yet astounding places in the world. Have you been to all these places? Yeah. When I was younger, I did a lot of things for money. So, I've been to a lot of places. Logan leaned back and propped himself up with his hands. Then, he raised his head to look at the stars. The night sky out at sea was beautiful. It was untainted by pollution, and the air was clear. There weren't any clouds blocking the view. The stars looked like gorgeous and shiny gemstones. Miss Fordham, what I want to say is that the world might be imperfect, and life might be hard. But you shouldn't be tied down by your past. You have to face the future. There are a lot of places you haven't been to before, views you have yet to see. I'll do that. Thanks. Logan noticed that her mood had improved significantly. He said, it's getting late. You should go back to your room. The temperature changes significantly at night, and the breeze is chilling. Sometimes, Olivia would have a weird feeling about Logan, like she had known him for a long time. He was dense at times, but sometimes he would be like a considerate gentleman. Even as a bodyguard, he was able to do the work of a nanny without any issues. The conflicting elements blended seamlessly within him, which made Olivia feel like he was mysterious and weird. Okay, you should rest, too. Logan escorted her to the entrance of her room. Olivia paused and asked, How long do we have until we get to Falconer Straits? After some calculations, he said, Given the current sailing speed, we'll get there in three days, tops. I've checked. It will be a clear day. Don't worry. Pirates won't show up when the weather's good. But, what if they do? Logan smiled. They won't. I talked about that because I saw you were in a bad mood. I was just trying to cheer you up. The area has been peaceful for a long time. We won't be so unlucky. Get some rest. We'll stop at an island for supplies tomorrow. If you're interested, we can get off the ship and take a look around. The Island, Chapter 796 Olivia shook her head. We should keep things simple and just stay on the ship. Logan hesitated before saying, Miss Fordham, may I ask why you're taking such a risk just to get back to Arlandia? You aren't exactly in the best of health, and I heard you don't have any relatives there. Why would you want to go back? Yeah, I have some things I need to do. Olivia was tight-lipped. She didn't reveal anything to him. Logan respected that and didn't ask any more questions. 
You should get some rest, then. It would take around half a day for the ship to dock, resupply, and get maintenance work done. Olivia didn't even get off the ship. She didn't even leave her room. She marked her calendar with a red pen. She was getting closer to Aldenvine. She would be able to see her children after some more time. After a while, a sailor came to update her about the situation. Miss Fordham, I'm sorry. There's some problem with the ship. Technicians are looking into it, but we won't be able to set sail today. How long would repairs be? If everything goes well, we can finish in a day. If not, it might take two to three days. Everyone is working overtime to get the ship running. The captain instructed me to update you about this. If you're bored, you can take a look around the island. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Olivia wasn't really interested in going on the island. She replied, thanks for the invitation, but I don't feel like going to the island. All right, the captain and some of the other men will be going to the tavern for some drinks. You can call us if you need anything. Will do. The night seemed more peaceful at the dock. There weren't any roaring waves. Olivia was sitting on the deck. Stargazing had become one of her habits on the ship. Suddenly, someone draped a cloak on her. Logan went to sit beside her, and for the first time, he had a beer in his hand. Why didn't you go to the tavern for a drink? Surely, spending so many days out at sea has been unbearable for you. Logan opened the beer and took two swigs. Then, he slowly replied, My duty is to keep you safe. I can't just take the money and do nothing. Besides, I don't think it's that unbearable. Olivia propped her head up with her hands and gazed at the twinkling stars. What do you plan to do after you've escorted me to Aldenvine? Logan laid down on the deck and said, I've been a wanderer all my life. I'll go where life takes me. I live until fate decides to end me. He raised his beer in the air and continued, Here's a toast to tomorrow and to the future. May we enjoy life whenever we can, for life is short. Alvia looked at his carefree demeanor and felt a little envious. She wanted to be free, too. Suddenly, gunshots sounded at the docks. A silhouette dashed to the side of a cliff and hid the two children he was holding under a rock. He told them, be good and stay here quietly. I'll be back soon. The children nodded at him and said, Daddy, be careful. They were used to life on the run. They were still so young, but they were already well aware of what dangers there were out there. The man quickly leapt away and started running. Countless gunshots were fired behind him. There were gunshots and footsteps. The little girl was so scared that she was trembling all over. She had just seen a cat shot by a gun recently. The cat lay in its own blood and never opened its eyes again. Chapter 797 The little boy sensed her fear and he quickly wrapped his arms around her. He said, Don't be afraid, Alicia. He covered the little girl's ears and tried his best to comfort her. The girl wasn't as brave as him, after all. Tears started to stream down her face when she thought about her dad ending up like the cat. She was scared, terrified. Her dad and brother were the only people she had left in the world. What would they do if their dad died? The breeze blew on the sea, and the waves crashed against the reef. They could hear the sounds clearly. Then, they heard more and more people running around them. The girl bit down on her lip. She didn't dare to make a sound. Back on the cargo ship, Logan sprung to his feet when he heard the gunshots. He quickly went to the side of the ship to look at what was going on. Olivia heard the gunshots, too. She started to feel nervous even though she felt like the gunshots were far away. What happened? Logan said with a serious expression, don't be afraid. It has nothing to do with us. Something must have happened on the island. Sometimes, incidents happen on these islands that don't belong to any countries. We'll be safe as long as we stay on the ship. Even though Logan's words made sense, Olivia felt like things wouldn't be so simple. The ship needed repairs so suddenly, and they had to delay the departure time. Those were ominous signs. These places were lawless. No one knew what would happen if they stayed for too long. Go ask for updates on the ship. When can we set sail? Okay, Miss Fordham. You should go back to your room and stay there. I'll take you away if things go wrong. Logan suddenly thought of something and turned around to look at Olivia. You can always trust me. 
Then, he ran off quickly. Olivia headed back to her room for safety. Logan came back to her after a while. Don't worry, Miss Fordham. I've looked into it. There was a gunfight on the shore not long ago. The gunshots came from that area. The person got away. We are not the targets. Olivia sighed in relief. That was good news. I've talked to the captain. They will be coming back on the ship as soon as possible. There are some big and strong sailors on board. They will do their best to keep you safe. Olivia rubbed her temples. I might have been overthinking. You should rest. It's getting late. All right. It was late. Olivia lay on her bed and waited for a while. There weren't any more gunshots. So, she closed her eyes and prepared to sleep. The ocean breeze was blowing at the two children hiding under the cliff. The little girl sobbed and said, Zack, my leg hurts. Their legs were numb from the long period of crouching. They were still too young, and they didn't know better. The little girl only knew that her leg wasn't feeling good, but she didn't dare to move. They waited for a long time, but the man never came back. The little boy signaled for the girl to stay silent and tried to climb out of the hiding spot to check their surroundings. Unexpectedly, his stiff legs didn't get folded under him, and he tumbled toward the sea. The girl cried out, Zack. Chapter 798. Olivia opened her eyes and sat up abruptly. Just as she was about to fall asleep, she was suddenly jolted awake. She instinctively scanned her surroundings. There weren't any noises, and even the sea was calm. She didn't know what caused her to wake. It was late. Olivia opened the door and saw Logan, who was smoking at a distance. She had never seen Logan smoke before. But he was leaning on the railing and smoking at that very moment. The lighting in the corridor was dim. She could barely make out his face. His body was also shrouded in darkness. Only his fingers holding the lit cigarette were visible. His demeanor was completely different from his usual self. He was like the new moon shrouded in the dark, exuding a sense of mystery. As soon as he saw Olivia, he flicked the cigarette into the ocean. He approached her and asked, What's wrong, Miss Fordham? Can't sleep. When he stepped into the light, he still had the harmless expression that he always wore. Olivia thought she was seeing things. Why aren't you back in your room? Olivia was shocked. Why was he still out here at this hour? Had he been doing this all along? Guarding her silently without her knowing. Yeah, I was afraid something would happen. I don't need that much sleep. I couldn't sleep even if I went back to my room. Why did you come out, Miss Fordham? I came out for some air. Olivia couldn't put her finger on what was wrong. She just felt uneasy for some reason. Don't worry, I've contacted the captain. They'll be back soon. Logan observed her expression carefully. He felt like there was something she wanted to say but was holding back. He wondered if she was frightened by the gunshots earlier. Miss Fordham, if you're afraid, I can stay with you in the room. You may feel more at ease if I'm with you. Okay. Olivia agreed to his request and allowed him into her room. She lay on the bed while Logan sat on the floor. He was in her line of sight, but he stayed ten feet away. It made her feel safe. Unbeknownst to the two of them, the captain, whose cheeks were flushed from drinking, was carrying two children in his arms as he staggered on board. Poor kids. Why would there be parents so cruel as to abandon their children in such a deserted place? Maurice, go check if anyone living in the area lost their children tomorrow. Yes, Captain. Tobias brought the children back to his room. The little boy was very dirty, with some leaves sticking to him. His clothes were dusty, and he had a few scrapes and scratches. Oh God, my poor child. This is so sad. Where are your parents? Both of the children didn't speak. They only shook their heads. Tobias figured that they were just too young and couldn't talk yet. The young girl's nose was red, and she looked very adorable. Okay, don't be afraid, kids. I'll go get you some food. Tobias brought them some food. The children were initially on guard, but they were too hungry. So, they started to eat. The little boy was like a hungry wolf. He kept his eyes on Tobias and kept the girl behind him. Tobias marveled at the sight. The boy already knew he should protect his sister at such a young age. He took out a first aid kit and wiped the boy's face with a warm towel. Does it hurt? 
Chapter 799. There were some scrapes on the boy's face. His fingers were also riddled with scratches. Tobias felt bad when he saw such a tiny hand being so badly hurt. The boy didn't squirm when he was applying medication on him. Tears were welling up in his eyes, but he held them back. Tobias stared at the boy. He felt like the boy looked familiar like he resembled someone he knew. After he cleaned the children up, he tried asking some more questions, but they didn't respond. The girl started to nod off after she had her fill of food. She fell asleep after a few minutes. The boy was visibly tired, too, but he perked himself up and stared at Tobias. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. What is your name? Did you get split up with your parents? The boy remained silent. He didn't want to reveal anything about himself. Tobias sighed. I've never seen such a cautious little kid. All right, I won't ask any more questions. Rest if you're tired. We'll be here for one more day. I'll help you find your parents tomorrow. He gave the bed to the child while he lay on the couch next to it. The boy finally fell asleep at midnight. The following day, Tobias woke up early in the morning and started to look for the children's parents. Unbeknownst to him, a man snuck into his room through the window as soon as he left. The boy opened his eyes warily. His eyes lit up when he saw the man. Daddy, be quiet, the man said as he gestured for the boy to quiet down. The boy quickly fell silent. When he noticed the blood stains on the man's shirt, he said, blood. Even though he should be at an age when he was carefree and knew nothing, the boy understood what the blood signified. I'm fine. It's not my blood. They are right on our tails. We'll hide out here for a while, the man said in a deep tone. The boy nodded. Ever since he could remember, the man had been on the run while bringing him and his sister along. And the men that were after them would find them only after a few days of peace and quiet. They had adopted a cat before, but it died before their very eyes. Tobias looked like a good man. Maybe he could adopt them. The man patted the boy on the head and looked at him with pain in his eyes. I'm sorry you two have to suffer so much because you're with me. The boy nuzzled against the man's palm and comforted him like a puppy. After we get away, I'll bring you to your mother's grave. She must miss you a lot. A tinge of sadness appeared in the man's voice when he said that. You have to grow up healthily. Your mother went through hell to give birth to the two of you. The boy nodded, seemingly understanding, his eyes filled with tears. You're so well behaved. Your mother would be so happy if she could see you. Mom, the boy muttered. The man talked to him for a while longer before sneaking back out through the window. The sun had just risen. Logan got a few hours of rest. He looked at the time and got up to go prepare breakfast for Olivia. As soon as he walked out the door, his expression became cold. He started to check his surroundings warily. What's wrong, Logan? You have a scary look on your face. One of the sailors walked past him and gave him a look. The sailor could feel goosebumps on his skin when he saw Logan's expression. Logan regained his composure and said, Did anyone walk past here just now? The sailor scratched his head. With a hungover expression, he said, I didn't see anyone. It's early in the morning, Logan. Please don't scare me. I'm very timid. Nothing. Logan waved his hand. After he turned around, his gaze became icy again. He wasn't mistaken. It was the smell of blood. Chapter 800. The kitchen was on a different floor. The ship didn't carry any livestock on board. There shouldn't be blood for no reason. Since shots were fired last night, Logan was extra cautious. He wouldn't allow anyone the chance to harm Olivia. He went to the monitoring room after he made breakfast for Olivia. He would get his answers there. Reuben, who was supposed to be watching the screens, dozed off. Logan operated the device with ease to check the feed from 30 minutes ago. He typed on the keyboard quickly but noticed that something was wrong with the surveillance system. He couldn't find the footage he was looking for. Someone had tampered with the system. Seems like someone had snuck on board. Tobias sent people to look for the children's parents for an entire day. None of the families on the island were missing two children. What kind of parent would leave their children badly hurt next to a cliff in the middle of the night? No matter how much he asked, the children didn't speak up about their parents. 
Tobias speculated that the children were deliberately abandoned. We're leaving today. Do you want to come with us? Tobias crouched before them and asked patiently. The children nodded obediently. The boy knew his dad was on the ship. They needed to hide on the ship to evade detection, so they didn't mind staying. The girl grabbed the boy's sleeve timidly and called out, I'm scared. So you two can speak. What are your names? The boy spoke up, Zach, Alicia, Tobias' eyes lit up. What beautiful names. Where are your parents? They're dead, Zach said calmly. Tobias sighed. He didn't know what kind of environment these two children had to grow up in to be so calm. Do you have any other relatives? No, the children were still young. He couldn't get any more helpful information, but they had agreed to go with him. All right, let's head back to the ship. The island wasn't affiliated with any countries. Maybe escaped convicts and other dangerous criminals called it home. These two children were so good looking. Maybe some human trafficker brought them here, and they escaped. If they really didn't have family, Tobias would bring them to Aldenvine. They were easy on the eyes, so they would have no trouble getting adopted. The sun was setting, the resupply was complete, so the ship set sail. The children were very well behaved. They didn't run around. Instead, they stayed in Tobias' room the whole time. They weren't picky eaters either. They ate everything that was brought to them. Tobias wondered what kind of life they had before this. They reminded him of his one-month-old grandson. So, he treated them lovingly. There weren't any kids' clothes on the ship. Tobias tore his clean clothes apart and altered them into two sets of smaller clothes. He picked up sewing from his years at sea. Wear this for now. I'll buy some new clothes for you at our next stop. Thanks, Mr. Tobias. The children were very well behaved. Tobias couldn't help but grow fond of them. He had planned to send them to an orphanage initially. But as he spent more time with them, he felt like he didn't want to leave them. The injuries on the children healed quickly under his care. Kids, we're heading into dangerous waters. The ship might get a little rocky. Stay here and don't run around, okay? Okay, Mr. Tobias. After two days of searching, Logan was able to eliminate all the rooms. At last, his sights were set on the storage room. He stood at the door.